In this video we'll be looking at the jump carry instruction. Now, this can be a bit of a confusing instruction to single step through because of the way that the various uh, steps are sequenced. Uh, but it's very straightforward, it's just really a case of understanding how the flags are updated and then how they're used by the processor. This is the simple program we're going to be using. All it does is load a value of FD into the accumulator. It adds one to that value. If there's a carry, it will jump to the end of the program. If there isn't a carry, it will jump back to the beginning of the loop. It will add one again. And basically, we'll keep adding one until there is a carry, at which point it will jump to the end of the program where there is a halt instruction and it will then, of course, halt. The values we need for this instruction are at the two uh, high memory locations. The first one is a value of 1, that's the one that we'll be adding, and the second value is the uh, FD value, which is the value we initially load into the accumulator. OK, so the processor is in its reset state. I have the halt option set so that it will actually halt when a halt instruction is reached rather than resetting. So if we start to step through the program, the first instruction loads a value of FD into the accumulator, which it has done. And you can see that value is also uh, reflected in the ALU. And again, the reason they're the same is because register B currently has a value of zero. The flags are zero flag is not set and the carry flag is not set. Obviously there's no carry and the value is not zero. As per the last video, remember that the flags are a result of the value that ends up in the accumulator, not necessarily the value that's showing in the LU. Okay, so we'll go on to the next instruction, which is an add. You will add one, which you can see it has now done. So, as I was saying, the value in the ALU and the value in the accumulator are not necessarily the same, and that's what you have to bear in mind when you're looking at the flags. So at the moment we've added one to the accumulator, but the value in the ALU is showing a value that's one higher than that. And that is because at the end of the instruction, the value in the ALU was copied into the accumulator. And so the value in the ALU now shows the value in the accumulator plus the value in register B. But that's not the value that the flags relate to. Okay, so the next instruction is the jump carry instruction. Now, of course, the carry flag isn't set. So if we step through this instruction, you'll notice that we don't jump. And we haven't jumped. So we're now at the point in the program where we've gone past the jump carry and we're now at the jump back to the loop start. And the loop start was at address one. So we've jumped back to that address. So we'll finish the jump instruction. And the next instruction will of course be to add one again. So we've loaded the add instruction. We've now added one. And again, we're at a point where the ALU and the accumulator show different values. This is simply because the accumulator is showing a value of FF and the register B has a value of one in it, which as far as the LU is concerned is an overflow, but because we're looking at the value that was last copied into the accumulator, there currently isn't an overflow. But as we step through the add, notice that the carry has come on, but the carry in its current state relates to the value in the LU and not the value in the accumulator. There is no carry as far as the accumulator is concerned. So when we come to the jump carry instruction, which is the one that we've loaded, we don't jump. And that's because of the point at which the carry flag came on. And that was after we had uh, essentially processed the jump carry instruction. So we don't jump. Notice we're back to the address we were at the end of the loop. And we now jump back to the address of one location, which is the start of the uh, addition loop again. So this is now the jump instruction taking us back to the beginning of the loop. 
So we'll finish processing that. The carry light is now on. Um, but as I said, that's the result of the value that was last in the ALU rather than the copy that's in the accumulator. So if we now jump through to the add instruction, we'll add one more. So what we're going to do now is add the accumulator, which is FF and one together, and that will cause a carry. And the carry light is still on, but as I say, that is because of the result that we had previously. If we'd subtracted one, then the carry light would now go out in this phase of the program. So we've now added these two together. There is now a carry, so although the value shown in the accumulator is uh, zero, there has been a carry, and we've actually carried over to a value of zero in the accumulator by adding one to FF. As a result of that, we have now an actual carry condition, and that will cause the processor to jump at the next jump carry. So as you can see, jump carry instruction has been decoded, and we have now jumped to the 1100 address, which is the end of program address. And if we go through that, there is a halt instruction there, and the halt LED is illuminated. So it's a bit confusing if you single step through it. It's just that you need to bear in mind the point at which the carry occurs and the relationship between the ALU and the accumulator and the B register. Um, and the flags relate to the value in the accumulator at the end of the previous instruction and not the value currently showing in the LU. The value in the LU, for example, now is a result of an overflow but the camera flag is no longer lit because the overflow occurred in the previous instruction. I hope it all made sense. Uh, if you step through it enough times then it becomes very clear but it can be confusing the first few times that you go through it. And again, any questions please put them in the comments.